All right, let's continue to follow our top story this morning, and that is the still undecided U.S. election. Joining us for more on what's next once we get an outcome in this election is constitutional lawyer Darren Thorne. Welcome back to your morning. Oh, thanks very much, Anne Marie. Great to see you. Yeah, great to see you too. Hopefully, you can shed some light on this. You know, the president came out around 2 a.m. this morning saying that this is a fraud on the American public. Uh, he declared, as far as he's concerned, that this has been won and he wants to take it to the Supreme Court. So, remind us what happens if it takes days or even weeks for a decision to come. Who runs the country in the meantime? Well, right now, the country, after the election, uh, really until January, January 20th, the country is uh, is still, it's been a bit of a holding pattern. So the current administration remains in place, uh, and that's always happened. Uh, so really, nothing is going to change in terms of who is running the country until January 20th. So really, the answer is uh, the current administration remains the administration until that point in time. And just to pick up on what Trump's saying, he's going to take this to the Supreme Court. Can he do that? Mm -hmm. Uh, he can. It's been done before in the 2000 election with Bush and Gore. Admittedly, that was a, a much more sort of limited kind of intervention, but it has happened. Uh, is it likely to succeed? That's another kind of a question. Um, you know, the court has a bit of a conservative bent. Uh, frankly, in a lot of ways, it's been packed with conservative justices over the last, um, you know, few years. Trump himself has appointed three of them. And in fact, three of them worked on the legal team, uh, the conservative or the Republican legal team for Bush v. Gore. But it's quite another thing to think that even though that that's the case, that they would simply rule in favor of the president, even though he seems to think so when you hear him talking about the, that the vote in Arizona it should, uh, should continue because he essentially is losing there. And uh, in the states where he's, uh, uh, where he's winning, they should stop the count. That's transparently problematic. Uh, and anti-democratic in a way that I think most justices are going to recoil from, um, uh, it, regardless of who they were appointed by. I'm probably less certain of this than I would have been before, hmm. uh, particularly given the fact that a new justice was just put on the court a week ago, which was very kind of unusual. Um, but the justices are, are well aware of the way that this sort of thing would look. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, it's doubtful that that would succeed. But at this point, we can't absolutely rule it out. Um, let's take a step back from all of the numbers and the speculation for just a moment and look at something that we do know, which is that the country is reeling with deep racial unrest and division. Talk about the change that is needed in the White House for that country to begin to heal some of those wounds that we saw ripped open in the summer. Yeah, I, you know, unrest is, is, a, is a mild way of putting it. It has been a difficult period, and in some ways, I think a change is absolutely needed. Uh, and the reason for that is that, uh, frankly, this president and this administration has behaved in ways that most people see as overtly racist. Uh, most recently, sort of refusing to denounce white supremacists. Let's not forget he was endorsed by the Ku Klux Klan in the last election, I believe this one. Um, that doesn't mean that everyone who voted for President Trump uh, is, is a racist. But if you were racist, you probably voted for Trump. And I think the problem is that for many minorities, uh, when they look around, uh, they kind of would say that anyone who is voting for this president, uh, it might not be overtly racist themselves, but in some ways they seem less concerned about this. And whatever they feel that they're getting out of his presidency is more important to them than the racial divisions and the racial problems that are being caused. And that's a very sort of disturbing thing and, and a damaging thing when you're thinking about your fellow citizens. It's wounding. It makes you wonder about your fellow citizens. And so in order to turn the page, that's why a lot of people were saying that this was an important election and the notion of it being a, 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 an election that um, could possibly have been a wave, which it wasn't, would sort of show that wasn't the case. But in any event, um, you know, it's a necessary first step to kind of turn the page and in some ways to reassure people that, you know, the majority of the American people recognize this and, and see it as a problem. Uh, Darren Thorne, it's always great to talk to you. Good to have you here on this Morton morning where there's lots of uncertainty. You provide some clarity. Thanks for being with us.